So, Jeff, a few players I wanted to ask you about. Um, Byron Buxton is uh, is fascinating. I know you and Chris List talk about him a lot on the Sirius XM show because Chris List has been the Byron Buxton guy for uh, about 15 years. Uh, Buxton, <laughs> Buxton hit his fifth home run on Sunday. I think it's clear that you and I talked about him in the preseason. We were doing draft podcasts. And we talked about the fact that he hit the ball hard last year. He hit a lot of home runs, didn't steal, but – um, he's at 481. He has one stolen base. He has seven runs, nine RBIs, five home runs. And the, the home runs are tanks, too. Like, they're all long home runs. Not like he's hitting cheap home runs right now. Um, he had a 27% barrel rate before today. Um, I don't know if he's going to run at all. I, I think he'll run a little bit. I think that, you know, the years of 25 stolen base are probably gone. But right. uh, we might look at the, looking at the years of, like, 30 to 35 home runs with this guy right now. I might become the Buxton guy if this keeps up. <laughs> I have him in one league, which is – this is more – that's like a – uh, infinity percent more than I usually have them in. So there is that. But uh, I have them in my uh, old AL only home, uh, home league, uh, but uh, Amaki league. And I was like, oh, I guess I'll bid the extra dollar on him. Yeah, sure. Or dime, as we go, dimes instead of uh, dollars in that. It's a different setup, but uh, I, I won't, bo- Just... I won't uh, bore everyone with the setup. But yeah, I, I, batting cleanup, and looks like that's to stay. I mean, yeah, maybe I mean, when that, Donaldson that comes was... back, we'll see what what that does to the lineup. But why mess with a good thing? And he like just looks bigger, looks stronger. Apparently, gained a lot of muscle over that. Still plays center field really well. It's not get slowed him down. He's he had mm-hmm. plenty of speed to burn. Um, it's fun right now. I just hope he stays healthy because he's uh, he. I, I there's probably no center field I like watching more chase balls down than than Bucks in the center field. Yeah, it, it's a blast. It, it, it he went three for four today. He, the only one stolen base. Come on, run a little bit more, would you? You know, but. <laughs> Dude, yeah, stay healthy, please. What a talent. Yeah, for sure. Um, we talked about J.D. Martinez a little bit earlier. Um, apparently, the uh, the iPads in the dugout might help him out a little bit, it appears. That uh, that 2020 season is looking more ridiculous by the day, just how sure much is. of an outlier, an outlier it is. He had three home runs today, up to five on the air, 16 RBI. Um, I wish all my offensive players could just live in Camden Yards for the season. Yeah, wouldn't it be so bad? It would yeah, be nice, especially facing that Orioles uh, staff. I think that's... You get when you get to go against Jorge Lopez on a regular basis. You know, count me in. We are worried that Rafael Devers has started a little bit slow, and I think that worry after three games in Camden is is fully gone now too. Yeah. By the way, another bullet point for the iPad: uh, Javi Baez has three homers now too. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, you know, and trying to think of normal guys, and of course Yelich is still striking out thirty seven percent of the time. So true. Yeah. You know, true. But he is hitting for average. Well, yeah. There you go. Um, Ryan McMahon, speaking of three home run games, he had a three home game earlier this week. He's hitting uh, five home runs, stole a base today, hit 324. The interesting thing with a man for me is that you look at the strikeout rate. Obviously, it is beyond super early, but he's a guy that strikes out a lot, 34% in 2020. He's at 15.8% right now. Granted, yeah. a couple strikeouts here and there, you know, alters that. Something to watch, though. Um, he's maintaining his 2020 hard uh, contact bumps, which is good when he's dropping the strikeouts. He's at 46%, 14% barrel rate. Three position eligible. This is a guy that if we were to draft right now is probably six, seven rounds higher than he was uh, just 10 days ago. Yeah, and he was he, he was cheap, and yet, weirdly, I, I wasn't that much in on him. I know you were a little bit more than I was. Yep. Uh, yeah, I, I, I've used I, I had him in DFS on the three-homer night. Oh, nice. Did, did you do – did the rest of your team do well enough to make it work? Uh, I, I think I'm in cash. You know, I, I, I broke even. Uh, no, I was a little better than break even, but, you know, not much. Speaking of league, different kind of leagues, you play in more trade leagues than I do. How how quickly, uh, how early in the season you're looking to uh, maybe try and find an early trade high guy or a buy low candidate? Like at what point in the season are you like, it's time to really look at some rosters and, and figure out some trades to make? Are you are you there yet or are you, wait, you waiting a little bit longer? You know, I'd be there, except everybody knows buy low so high, I feel like. Yeah, and, that's true. And I, but the thing is, trades still happen in keeper leagues right away. Right. That's, you know, you know I made a trade uh, – on the eve of my reserve draft in the XFL, which we did the auction in December, and then we did the draft uh, in late March. And it was like, yeah, I'll trade a prospect there because I'm going to go for it there. So I got, I, I had a U Darvish trade then. It was a big blockbuster deal. Nice. Uh, and, you know, the thing is, like, other things had happened that I needed to do that. Zach Allen got hurt. So I was like, I need another ace. So, yep. And I'm already, I'd already made two other similar big deals earlier. So I was like, okay, let's go for it. Because I was looking at Aaron Savale, and he uh, he had two he has two starts. He's two and zero. Oh, he's a uh, you know fourteen in point two innings. So he's like throwing a lot of innings, which is hard to find right now. Yep. ERA is really good. The WHIP is point five five, which is absurd. I think he might be a trade high guy. If I was in the league, I think I'd try and max his value out right now. His his BABIP is oh sixty seven. 
And that's with a 45% hard hit rate and a 9% barrel rate. So it's not like he's avoiding hard contact. He's just getting a lot of hard contact having to be going at people. Um, I do think he's really good. I like watching him. I like his the way he pitch mixes and all that. But uh, K rate's up a little bit, but it's still 25%. You're not talking about a guy who strikes out a ton of guys. He's going to have five hits and three walks. If I could, like, you know, take where I drafted Savala, use mm-hmm. these two starts, maybe trade up a little bit. I think he's a guy that I would do that on. I think it might be able to work. I think you might find someone who's interested in, in trading for Savali right now. Last two uh, start. The first, those two starts have been against Detroit. He gets to yep. face non-Detroit next, and it happens to be the White Sox <laughs> in his next two starts. Oh, so, yeah, there you go. Uh, it, he does miss the Yankees, it looks like. Uh, but, you know, so but you know he's got one start each in the next two weeks. So, yeah, your point holds. Uh, that That's another reason. But you know, the problem with playing the, you know, season-long redraft leagues with a trade is it's not like you're just trading for these next two weeks. You're trading for the whole season. Right. He's yeah. going to be plenty more games against Detroit and Kansas City, and I just I think he's someone you might be actually be able to flip for someone you like more and would have drafted a couple rounds higher ten days ago. I'd agree with that. I'd absolutely agree with that. Yeah, there are certain outlets on in our in our sphere that would argue that he was that's where he should be, but uh, yeah, that's probably true too. Yeah, so we'll see about that. Um, Brandon Lau is a guy who uh, a lot of people liked is, is struggling so far. He was 0 for 4 on Sunday, dropped to 179, has no home runs, no stolen bases, only two extra base hits. Um, he had a nice strikeout drop in 2020. So this is a number that I want to look at as kind of the season goes along. He was down to 26%. He's back up to 31.5% this year. Again, that's two or three strikeouts. Either way, could really move that number. But does not have a barrel yet, but he does have a 50% hard hit rate. That's a pretty good sign. His launch angle's a little bit down, but, you know, we're 10 games. I think that's going to come around. He's the guy that I'm, I'm not worried about yet. Right. Uh, the question might be, though, he really struggled in the playoffs, too, though. He did. Was a book opened up on him. And did, did, does is there a point where his playing time's a little bit at risk uh, we, with Tampa Bay, the way they, they do stuff, too? It's possible. I mean, it, it yeah. could be like, send the word out. We know how to defeat it. Uh, sort of thing. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, it's possible. I mean, it was on a big stage. Everybody's watching. And everybody True. can. And it's not like teams that are out of the playoffs stop scouting. Now right. they can dedicate their resources to the few teams that are playing. Yep. And, try, and, and they really want to beat these teams that have beaten them. You know, it's like, okay, well, look, let's try to get that. Figure that out. Uh, and I don't know, but it is also what eight games into the season, nine games into the season. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I, I'd be slight, I'm slightly concerned. Uh, he is striking out a decent amount still, and it's so funny because la- we're so I think we're a little, last year peaks in a little bit like last year, this was 16% of the season, which was like a, a big it matters. And now we're yeah. now we're at what like six or seven percent of the season, like it so doesn't even matter yet, but. You know, it's uh, you got to You look at everything on a, with a microscope, and we, you know, everything it's, it's magnified early in the year. It's just the way it is. Um, but I looked a little bit deeper on Lau. I think uh, I'm gonna watch, especially the K rate. But uh, he's hitting the ball hard enough that I think it's coming around pretty quick. Sure, I can see it. A guy I wanted to ask you about, uh, Garrett Hampson. Uh, kind of got a little bit of helium late in draft season as it looked like he was gonna be the starter in center field. He had a three stolen base game this week. He's got four stolen bases. Um, it's funny because I don't. I, he was someone that I was uh, avoiding in drafts. So I hadn't looked really closely at him. I figured with the stolen bases he was doing well, but he's hitting 206. Yep. Um, the strikeouts are, are, are better. He's not striking out a lot, but I don't know. He just is not a guy that I think is a very good hitter, and I just wonder how long he can stick at leadoff uh, hitting 206. It's always been my argument. Um, yeah. And I, I was cringing this week because the three stolen and base both. game and, and yep. a, a bag the next day. You yep. know, I, I'm just hearing Chris list in my ear, like, oh, I told you. So. And knowing that he probably might be right because he's finally getting regular playing time. You know, that's always been one of the big bugaboos about him is you never know when he's going to be able to play. It's also hitting 154 at home. I mean, he had a no, I, I take that back. He wasn't hitting 154. He had an OPS of 154 on the road. Uh, <laughs> that's right. OPS. He's hitting zero on the road. He went over yeah. four again today, but, uh, you know, I mean, he does have he does have those bags, and those bags play. They do. He's his WRC plus is fifty three right now. Like he just he, he's I don't know how long he can. I know it's the Rockies, and they do stuff that makes no sense all the time. But mm-hmm. how long can you have this guy really lead off? Like I get he's fast, I get he can steal bases. The guy had a two eighty seven OBP last year. Like you can't just leave him at the one spot all year, right? I, I don't think you can. But Rockies are going to Rocky. Uh, it's, that's that's the one. That's the one point. Uh, Brennan Rogers is making uh, some significant progress in his recovery. It's a pretty, it was a pretty bad hamstring strain. Uh, it was. It was not just a tweak or you know anything like that. It was a, a really not just. And I know every strain is a tear, but it was a pretty big tear from what I could tell, uh, judging by the reporting on that. Yeah, but uh, 
That's but like that's... Rymel, Rymel Tapia is a better leadoff hitter right now for them, and they don't use him there. They used to. They did. They used to. They did. They and did. I don't. I I think they're going to have to at some point because I just I just don't think Hampson plays up there. Man, but anytime the Rockies are on the road, it's Stream City, though. I mean, it. Uh, I'm looking at I'm looking at Tapia. I guess he hasn't really got on. He got on base last year, but the year before he didn't walk very much. He's a 309 OP, so maybe he's not the best example either. They don't. I guess the the point is the Rockies. Like that lineup suddenly is not nearly as fun as it's always been. You know, when you get Arnado out of the middle of it, um, you, you know, do you have Crow in the middle? They don't really have a guy that I guess is gonna is kind of pushing Hampson either. Unless it's Sam Hilliard, who doesn't play anyway. Right. I mean, well, it's Rocky's going to see also Rocky's going to Rocky. I mean, For sure. although he's hitting 176 in his own right, too. So, yeah. but, but, you know, as much as we want to call Rocky's prospect hounds assemble, I mean, they, they, and, they're all kind of just eh. and coming off a year where he hit 210 also. I mean, it just yeah. would you uh, would you hold Hilliard right now in a 15 team? I'm assuming at a 12, you think he's a drop. Uh, I, 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 would, I would almost do home and away splits with him. Drop, you know, whenever they've got like even half a series at home, I pick them up. Yeah, you know, we'd look to see if they're not facing a bunch of lefties, but uh, you know, if they're facing at least two righties and, and you can have them for a half half a week, sure. Yeah, he's hard. He's hard to hold on to right now. Just he's not. He's not getting enough at bats. Just not playing enough. Right, and, and when the whole team is down. I mean, Crone's not hitting at all. Uh, yeah, that that that's been bad. You know, quietly their best hitter might be Dom Nunez. Yeah, he's got three home runs and has kind of taken that, uh, taken the bulk of the playing time away from Elias Diaz. And I'm lying about him being a best hitter. I'm just being silly. But three home he runs. Doesn't, is no he doesn't. He does three home runs though. Yeah, yeah. it's. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how much you're lying. Oh, I guess his, his OBP. He has he has zero walks and. Uh, <laughs> it's not, it's, it's six everybody on this team. Yeah. It's like you, yeah. then you're like, oh, oh, who who could bat lead off for this team? Eh, just let Story bat nine times. He'll be fine. That that would work. You get Blackman in every once in a while. Um, you know, of course, McMahon. Okay, and then McMahon. Just, but you don't, you don't want him. Ghost leading runners. Off. Yeah, you don't want him leading. It's just, uh, I don't know. We always talk about the Rocky shuffle and get all your Rockies at home. It's just there, are, there aren't that many that are playable right now. Yeah, it's just like trying to play the, you know, a team full of Brent Mains and just trying to turn them into real hitters. It's, uh, it, it, it goes without saying that when you get the Rockies on the road, that is someone that's a team I would stream against pretty regularly. Yeah, I mean, uh, they, they, exactly, exactly right. And you know, Johnny Cueto looked like vintage Johnny Cueto on Friday. He was like, although he looked more like Louis Tiant with the like the seventeen different pauses. He's he's really playing the shimmy in there this year. Yeah, he is. He is, but it, it worked at least this particular week. It was weird. I, I'm such a I'm such a baseball fan that I was kind of hoping he get the complete game, even though I wanted Jake McGee to come in and get the save. I was kind of rooting for the complete games. We get so few of them, and I, I do like Cueto a lot. I was uh, I was kind of hoping he's gonna finish that game off because they had, they had a crowd there for the first time and people right. were going nuts. And I tell you what, it's funny. We you know we we were so happy to have baseball last year. It's amazing to me how much difference uh, even having a twenty percent crowd there is for watching games. Oh it just gosh, makes a, yes. it makes yeah. a, it makes a big difference. You, yeah. And I was so happy to have it last year that I didn't really care that we didn't have the crowd, but it makes a difference. It does. Uh, there, and you could make it because like the Nats played one game, uh, their doubleheader, the the opening of that doubleheader where they put in the piped in fake noise, and it was just yep. miserable again. You're like, oh, get rid of this stuff. Ah, yeah. oh, terrible. It's funny. Yeah, uh, the Dodgers made it like three innings with their cashless. Um, mobile ordering food before they opened the concession because it was such a disaster. So uh, good work, Dodgers. Oh, really? I didn't hear about that. That's pretty wild. Yeah, no, they, yeah, they, like the fourth inning, they, they, they tweeted out they're opening up concessions to regular walk up because they just, they just butchered the whole thing. Yeah. Well, I, I got to imagine logistics of that could be really difficult. But you figure at 20% capacity, you would be able to figure it out. But apparently, like the parking lot, like getting in the parking lot was a disaster, which seems impossible. It's always a 20... disaster at Dodgers. I know, Stadium. but it's 20, it's 20%. Like you go from, 50,000 to 10,000, you think that would be like figured out just kind of organically, right? You know, 10,000 people at one given time still was it. a big surge of people. At, at three gates only that, yeah, it's just, I guess that it kind of works. But Did they uh, only open three gates? Yeah. That's probably. probably. There's one, two. I think there's only three entrances, right? Yeah, you might be right. I, I don't know at like the back of my hand, but yeah, I just know it's really hard to get in and out of. And yeah. you never go to a game on Friday night unless you're just, you're, you're either willing to leave early or wait forever. Yeah, it's just I thought it was funny that even with the twenty percent capacity, they still mad, managed to butcher everything. So, yeah. Aaron, anybody else you want to talk about? We're ten games in here. There were just some guys that I wanted to highlight, but to anybody that uh, is piquing your interest at the moment that you want to discuss? No, just uh, I threw up a new article up on the site tonight uh, talking about uh, you know in-game box scores on Savant are so amazing, and I never realized it. Like I was, someone asked me a question on Twitter about Luis Castillo's velocity. I was like, okay, I'll go to his player page and try to find that. 
wait, just go to, and someone's like, no, go to the box score, dummy. Um, yeah. I'm like, oh, it's a, it's a whole new world. I was so yeah. happy. It's uh, very cool. It, it, there, there's so much stuff in there, and I don't even know, I don't even know half of it, too. There's just so much stuff. It, it, it's overwhelming, and I can't believe I didn't know this before. I'm supposed to be someone that knows something about this industry, blah, 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 but do it. Check it out. Check out the box scores on Savant. Savant is amazing. The people at MLB, I mean, for all the crap MLB gets as an organization, MLB.com and like the the other properties like Corey Schwartz, Darren Wilman, all of them, they do great work. And it's just it's just a hearty appreciation and thank you for what they do. And like in the last five years, just it's just blown up how much more is out there. Like it, it's just it's incredible. I mean, you go on Savant, you can like watch any home run at any point. You just pick a guy and you can yeah. watch those home runs. The amount of video clips that you can just get on Film the room. Oh my yeah, gosh. It, Free use within, like, from their film room. Yeah, you just have within, to say like, it's from them. Five seconds, you can pretty much watch. It's, it's insane how fast. It's just crazy. It's amazing. It's yeah. really amazing. We live in a, a heck of a time. I'll say that. Much. It's funny because every once in a while, I like, think of something from the 80s and try and go find a clip of a specific, and it's impossible to do because it's just not on there. And now it just it's just automatic. And it's just it, we take we take it for granted, but fully appreciate it because there's, there's a lot of cool stuff, and it, it makes a lot of fun. It does. So, cool. Well, thanks, everybody, for listening to the Roadwire Fantasy Baseball Podcast, the Sunday night slash Monday morning version. We'll be back at you uh, next week, as always. If you want to follow Jeff on Twitter, he's at Jeff underscore Erickson. I am at Scott Jenstead. Uh, if you can, please rate over the podcast. We greatly appreciate that. Other than that, hope everybody has a good uh, week of baseball, and we'll be back at you next week. Take care. Try Rotowire today, free for 10 days. Get our premium tools, rankings, analysis, and breaking news alerts. No credit card required. Go to rotowire.com forward slash try.